And I want to introduce you to Alex Barron. The road to Indy wants a little wicker. Yeah. And the classic James Hunt breakfast. KW makes the perfect suspension for every demand. Find them in the description below. Oh, what's up, people? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like super energetic because it's dark out and it's the morning. I've never been a morning person, but I have had a breakfast of Dunkin' Donuts drive through cappuccino and donuts, and the classic James Hunt breakfast. So I thought I would just come over here. My wife is now giving me crap because uh, she's the camera person. <laughs> and so we're gonna go this way. I don't know why she'd be looking at me funny for having uh, Dunkin' Donuts for breakfast, but uh, let's go uh, check out the garage and what's going on. I know the other guys in USF 2000 are getting their gear ready, which means I need to get my gear ready. Okay. <laughs> How you doing? Morning. So here's the USF 2000 cars. Here's mine. Sitting on the battery tender, make sure it's okay. Isn't it pretty? Okay. I didn't have a rising trip and I had a room to Indy discount. Yeah. Hey Mike. <laughs> Is the plug on my mic this many poles or this many poles? Do I need the adapter or the, do you know? It should just be that. Okay, we'll go with that. What's up people? The camera is, it, is here. Is it YouTube or? Yes, it's YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys remember they, Victor? They Actually, maybe you don't because I haven't introduced you yet. That was a test session. It's coming out in the future. Uh, Victor, where are you from? Sweden. I like that. So why are you here? To race uh, here in the Road to Indy in the USF 2000. The series, the car a bit slower than yours, but still quite fast. So you like uh, you like the USF 2000 more? Uh, the Indy Pro. I haven't tried. Oh, the Indy Pro you haven't been in. I yes. haven't tried the Indy Pro yet. But from Formula Four, how do yeah. you like the USF? It's a great car. Good. Yeah, I mean it's, it's very fast. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Cool. We'll excited. see how it goes. You excited for today? Yeah. I mean now it's it's almost not light yet, but we will see when it gets light how, how it feels around the speedway in this car. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. I like your helmet. Yeah, some Swedish colors. I mean, you need to represent your country now, so everyone yeah, knows indeed. where you're from. I heard that. They're not going to like the old uh, spoiler on the back. Uh, maybe not for, for the season, but I think it's okay for now. It's okay now. for now? Yeah. yeah. I think it's fine. I, uh, I just did mine up. So I've got the uh, chin spoiler you do. And then um, apparently the road to Indy wants a little wicker. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. I think this looks good, but of course maybe some safety feature we don't know about. I'm not sure. Yeah, for sure. It looks good, I think, but we will see. Cool. All right, I like yeah, it, nice man. Yeah, nice helmet you also, yeah. Thank you. I had a uh, older gentleman who's an uh, old sign painter do it up. Nice, nice. It's kind of cool. Yeah. 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 <sighs> All right, you guys. So, uh, safety gear is a funny thing because um, there's a lot of it and it's very important because you're not going out if you don't have it. And uh, it's especially important to a driver because it's also your gloves and shoes and helmet and the way for you to connect with the car and the outside world. So I was skitzing out a second ago because I couldn't find my Heinz device because somebody placed it in a different spot and I freaked out that I left it in the car, which is not at the track right now. But I didn't. Yes. <laughs> my wife, the camera person, found it. It's starting to freak out. So everything is allegedly fine. Spectacles, testicles, watch and wallet. Okay. Shoes, gloves, socks, this, that. All right. Okay, I'm going to go change in the bathroom. You can't come. Just kidding, you can totally come. But don't bring the camera. <laughs> you guys it is now daytime which is very nice because uh, 
I don't really like getting up at zero dark 30, but in this case, I don't mind. <laughs> but actually what I want to do, I had an outing already this morning. Uh, didn't record it because frankly, I just wanted to vibe with the team, figure out the protocol flow. And I want to introduce you to Alex Barron, who is here as my track coach and the man on the radio. Alex, what's going on, man? Not much. I'm just hoping it'll warm up here this afternoon so we get some good track time in. Definitely. I appreciate it. Now, uh, for those of you that are starting to remember, or maybe you don't, Alex, can you tell them just a little bit about your career in kart and IRL and everything? What's your deal? Well, I grew up doing some karting things, and then uh, being here at the Speedway brings back some good memories. Yeah. Running the 500 six times. and. Uh, we're here with Legacy to here today. Uh, came in in the dark. We thought we were going to run early this morning, but unfortunately, it was dark and wet. Yeah. And uh, we're really excited about the season. Got three cars here, and uh, obviously, it's nice to be at Indianapolis. Definitely. Well, and the other thing too is, you guys. So for me, obviously, coming from uh, you know an amateur racing and such, you're working on your own stuff, or I'm teaching students to do it. Maybe you've got somebody on the radio just for pit protocol and stuff. So now actually working with a proper professional team and getting going is amazing. But the thing that I took away uh, from it is I just loved how perfect, I mean, I don't, do you know how nice it is to have him in my helmet? Like at the perfect moment he comes in, just cool as a cucumber and efficiently says exactly the right thing and things to remember. And uh, at first I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, wow, well, that was awesome. I'm like, copy, thank you. <laughs> So uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you guys, this is a lot of fun, and Alex, I really appreciate it. So he's gonna be around. Looks like they're firing up the USF 2000, Simon and Victor going out, so you got work to do. All right. Catch you in a minute. Right. Thanks, Alex. Ah, come on. So everybody's taking off. Let's go watch them go away real quick. There goes Simon. Simon's in the black helmet, and Victor's right here. Victor's the young man from Sweden getting going they're just they're great kids uh, I love Simon's attitude he's uh, he's a lot of fun and uh, Simon's Simon's uh, man after my own heart he wants to win but uh, now it's a little quieter check out the Pro 2000 so this morning we had slicks on it but when we got here if you guys remember it was wet uh, and went out to watch USF 2000, the very first outing. It was still basically dark and quite wet and quite cold, and I was up there, and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's pretty wet. So um, I went down there, and uh, actually everybody was on wets, and uh, Mike was getting ready with the US 2000 guys who were out before me, uh, and uh, we came over, and Joey very nicely switched it to wets for me. What's up, buddy? I'm, 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 what do you want to say? Nothing, at least all four corners are on at this time. Yes, they are. It's kind of cool. I'm You're proud of me? Yeah, I'm proud okay. of Okay, all right, all right. Nothing else? No. Okay, do I have a nickname today? Not yet. Yes, no nickname today.
Okay, you guys, so that was the end of the second session. I've had a little time. I've got my jacket on, because it's actually really cold here today. I got Nomex underwear and my suit, and the Hinchman's thicker than normal. I got this because it's cold. Uh, anyway, I am frustrated and annoyed, as a racing driver would be, but not at anything that you shouldn't be. It's just that, frankly, without as much seat time and practice I'd like before this, I'm not accustomed to not being faster, and like, I, I am getting kind of edgy, but it's good. It, um, the thing about the Griffiths test is it's the end of the year for everybody. Um, and it's kind of, it's, it's the debutante ball. <laughs> so, you know, coming out, I love being at Indy. Obviously I love the history of the track and all that, but it's a neat track. Um, for me, the car is totally new. The first session was what? And then it started to have a line that dried out. So went out with rain tires, but then as it wore on, I'd be going and finding places to cool. And, you know, I enjoyed that. Um, and then the next outing, we put on slicks, and so Simon and Victor went out in the USF 2000s. They were, they were rocking out. By the way, Simon and Victor are kicking ass. Uh, one, two. So I, I am so excited uh, about Legacy and the uh, USF guys next year. Just like, <laughs> I think you're going to crush it. Uh, and I like the guys, so that's cool. Uh, so then I go out after them, and it starts doing this weird, like, miss thing. And I'm just like, what the so it's not wet enough for rains, and I'm just like this. Now, Alex is in my ear, Alex Barron, like the awesome guardian angel that doesn't exist, but he does exist. <laughs> so he's talking, and uh, Mike's on the radio, and I'm sitting in the car with an umbrella, and um, we wait a minute, and then, uh, so Joey, the jokester, he's like, I give it two laps before they red flag it, and somebody goes off, and he was right. <laughs> um, we waited to go out, because basically the consensus was we got way more to lose than gain, um, which is annoying, because I want the track time, but, so we waited a little bit and then I go out and it's slick as hell. Um, and I'll be honest, I didn't have the confidence that I could lean on enough to get any temperature in it to make it stick. And I, I just go out like half a lap. Like you guys, I'm bringing it in. I'm, I'm not, not right now for this. So brought it in, waited, went out a little bit later. And for me, it was strange because it was, these are like learning lessons. And I hate it when people say learning lessons because losers are always like, I had a great learning experience. Yeah, well, you're still a loser. <laughs> so, but what I, I learned from and grew was being able to sense the track and the coloration of it when it's just like kind of humid and like damp. Um, and then, uh, so I go out there and sliding around and Alex is like, you gotta just lean into it uh, and just have at it. So I did and started getting temperature. I'm like, holy crap, it grips. So um, the other thing I'm learning, which is really interesting, is downshifting in this. Uh, obviously paddle shifting, but Alex really helped me out because the computer has, it won't let it over rev. So I'm accustomed to methodically waiting and having the timing. So you're not jacking with the motor, but he's like, you need all the braking you can get, just bang it hard and let the computer stop it initially. But then second gear for the slow stuff, you kind of have to wait a moment, click second. But I was dragging on the brakes too long and he mentioned that like once you second, at that moment, you'd be off the brakes and in because you, you got to roll and fly the car through. And then when I did that last time out, I'm like, yes, that was awesome. So um, I am in fact growing, but it's frustrating for me because I want to be <laughs> doing my racer thing. Um, but I just, I just love this team. I love being here. And uh, I am so happy for the two new young guys. They're just kicking ass. Uh, and uh, I'm so excited for next year. So um, I need to get through the weekend and look smart. Um, although, why should I look smart? I'm already being honest with you guys. You're gonna judge me however you want to. I'm trying, people, I'm trying. But let's face it, I'm older and work for a living and don't get to do this this much. So I'm drinking through a fire hose and God damn it, we're gonna make the car fast. Urgh! All right, I'm gonna go try to make the car fast. So just let it come out a little okay. earlier. That way you have more time to straight line break. Okay, nice. Yeah, because otherwise... If you're angling out and then you got to come back, that means you got to make more rotation entry to apex. Yeah, you're right. And then you're, you're also, you know, you can, you can take another two feet over, mm -hmm. which will allow the later apex work for you. Yes. Because when you are three quarters up the track, apex exit, because you're pinching it, you're going to have to ask the front end to do too much work if you roll the right speed you need. Yeah.
was it for today. I had three outings. Uh, the first one was rainy and wild. The second one was drizzly and slick and cold and like harsh. Nah. Uh, currently, the Indy Lights guys are out. And uh, the Indy Lights cars are actually really pretty. Um, that would be a, I'm thinking that'd be a fun car to drive in the future. Uh, I want to show you guys some on the mic, but um, so there's the car, still in one piece, hooray. Uh, one thing we did do is so, since I actually found a modicum of speed and for the first time actually trusted that air pushes the car down and it'll stick. <laughs> I went a bit faster. The guys threw on some new tires, which is the first time I've gotten to actually run one of these with new tires. So that was nice. Picked up a little time and uh, the car was just more live. Let's go where it's a little quieter though. But it um, looks pretty. And so, um, so I'm running it. And uh, this is my new helmet. We'll, we'll sh I'll show you it some other time, you guys, but really nice one appropriate for IndyCar Road to Indy. It's an Arai. Um, it's pretty cool because there's a bladder inside there and this little tube that if you were in a wreck and they were concerned of any, like, neck injury or, you know, spine issue, they can unstrap your helmet, inflate this, and it'll literally just pop the helmet right off your head by inflating that bag. But uh, this is where you plug in for the uh, radio and then the mics or the uh, earphones, you stick them in your ear, you put your balaclava so head sock over that, and it comes out and you plug it in here. And what was annoying, we'll go over here. What was annoying about it is that I lost my left ear completely. So I only had the right earphone, uh, which was okay in the pits, but when I was out on the track, it made it really hard for me to hear uh, Alex Barron when he was out there giving, giving me some sage advice, which is freaking amazing. You know how amazing it is to have a dude that raced IndyCar and Champ Car and everything forever that's just a consummate professional out there watching you and just be like, hey, uh, I can't, I can't, I'm not even gonna imitate him because I'm not remotely as professional and smart as Alex. So um, he was great. But anyway, so I couldn't hear him worth a damn because I only had the one ear. So I'd be like blazing through these fast corners that are flat out. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> and Alex is going into like finite detail of the line and stuff. And I get like three words from it. And I'm like, Alex, stop talking. I want to push the button and tell you I can't hear you. So he'd be going through, I'm like, ah. And then come through and I'm like, um, I lost my earphone. I don't hear you real well. Maybe talk shorter and I'll understand better. But that was that. So um, I, um, I'll be honest, uh, earlier today, after the first and second outing, I was, um, I don't know how I felt, but I was frustrated um, because, uh, you know, this is like jumping in the deep end off a skyscraper with torrid waters. Um, and, uh, you know, I've driven a lot of cool cars, but this is legit pro racing. These uh, drivers are awesome. Uh, the racing is close. The cars are all the same. Uh, so, you know, you gotta start swinging. And uh, this last time out though was, it felt like the first time I've actually gotten to drive the car. I, I, I really mean that, like I've physically driven the car, but I've not once had the condition, the time to be in it long enough to actually lay into it, trust that it'll stick, see where I can break zone. So I guess that's not bad. At least I feel pretty good. Um, and we're gonna go faster. So. I feel like that's a positive. It's still slow, but uh, at least now I know how to get a lot faster. And uh, yeah, it was a hell of a lot of fun and I felt really good. So uh, pretty excited. Um, it's pretty damn awesome to be going down the uh, pit straight and uh, like, boom, right next to somebody else flat out. And uh, this one dude passed me with like a, like a half a mile an hour, like just barely anything on me. And it was just cool to just like, boom, tuck right in and feel the change of the air uh, flow and uh, you know got in behind him on a draft like that and then just wheel up to the braking zone it's uh it's pretty damn awesome so uh in any case hopefully this is the start of a long journey but uh i'm having fun and i hope you guys are too uh so i guess i'm out of here subscribe hit the bell see you next time well there's only one racing suit i've always dreamed of owning and that's a henchman since 1925, Henchman Racing Uniforms has been supplying suits to drivers ranging from Dale Earnhardt, Mario Andretti, and even Steve McQueen in the movie Le Mans. So guys, when it's time to go racing and you guys want to be safe and look amazing, let's go classic American. Get yourself a Henchman.